Do you need the priesthood to teach the Word of God and lead a church? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Arul, and I appreciate you joining us. I have Robert Lundgren here, and I appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're still in Idaho. Beautiful country up here. Uh, where were you born? Were you El Paso, in? Texas. Oh, you were? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, how long did you live there very long? And no, I was there probably a couple months because my dad was military. Oh, he was? Yes. So he traveled a bit? Traveled a lot. Yeah. Traveled a lot. And uh, you ended up here? Did he end up here? No, or? he didn't. I okay. ended up here because of my in-laws. Oh, okay. Yeah, they lived here. Okay. Well, we may hear more about all that, but um, were you, were you, was your dad a Mormon? No, he was not. Oh, no. okay. Mom? Uh, my mom was. She oh, was, was she? Mormon. She uh, joined the church. Oh, how, uh, were you born then? or? I was, when yeah. I was about 15. Oh, she joined, she joined the, church. the church. Yes, and you joined then at the same time. I did. Time? I followed her in footsteps. Yeah, got baptized yeah. at age fifteen. Huh? I did. What did you What did you think about? Now, were they religious before? Uh, religious? My mother always had been because she yeah. took us as kids to the uh, Nazarene Church, the okay. Lutheran Church, and uh, so. But it really, we went, but it really yeah. didn't, wasn't really part of her life. And she uh, embraced Mormonism, and she did. Did you understand much at that point? I did not. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> what uh, What did you think, and what did you hear? What was your impression, if you can remember back then? Well, uh, when the missionaries came over, uh, a couple of young men, just phenomenal young men, you yeah. know, yeah. and uh, just great attitudes, just loving. And they were teaching the lessons. And it made you feel good when you're a young man and you don't have a lot of friends because you're new in the area. And uh, oh, that again, was a because big part of the of army it. thing. Huh? Right. Okay. And so uh, here you see people that uh, they want to be your friend. And that yeah. was important. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it wasn't so much about doctrine or. Uh, I listened to it and everything, but I think a big part of it was just the friendship and yeah. how they they just make you feel like family. Did you sense a Jesus, a message about Jesus? Or was it more about the it church? Was more about the prophet. Yeah. That was more of what you heard about and yeah. sang the, about. The first vision and all that right. stuff of Joseph Smith. And, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that was the sense I had when I went on my mission as I was preaching the church <laughs> and the right. first vision and the Book of Mormon. Not so much about Jesus, so, right. yeah. So you active after that then? I was, we were going, uh, I went to seminary in the mornings. Early morning <clears throat> seminary? Early morning seminary. Bright and uh, early, huh? <laughs> very bright and early, 6 a.m. Oh boy. You know, uh, then where you had on Thursdays, we had uh, the youth activities, yeah. always went to that. Okay. And then uh, on uh, Sunday, had your meetings had the and meetings. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, did you, I guess you got the priesthood and all that stuff. Right. And, I got, uh, received the Aaronic priesthood, the Melchizedek. Did you? I did. Now, did you ever go through the temple? Uh, no, I did baptism for the dead in oh, the temple you? Yeah. as a youth. Oh, you did? I did. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. And did you... Uh, so, did you teach? I guess you taught Sunday school or something, and did you do anything in teaching or anything with the youth or? As far as in the Mormon church? Yeah, in the Mormon church. Uh, no, I just, I did give some uh, <clears throat> talks, yeah. you want to call that, during testimony time and, oh, yeah. and during certain Sundays. So you feel like you had a testimony of the church? I did uh, feel like I had a testimony yeah. at that time. You, you read know, the Book of Mormon? Or? I was reading a lot of the Book of Mormon. Yeah. Yes. Not so much the Bible, probably. The Bible was, wasn't was brought up that much. <laughs> you carried it, you but noticed? you didn't, <laughs> yeah, you didn't really use it. You know, I don't think we really pay attention to that as Mormons, the fact that we 
And then we cherry pick. I mean, we only use a few of the scriptures anyway. That's, but that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. So what happens in life after school and high school? Well, I was asked if I wanted to go on a mission after high school. And uh, my mom really was excited for me to go on a mission. She kept pushing. Yeah. And so did the friends of the church. Sure. And uh, I had uh, signed up for the military in the 11th grade. Oh. Delayed entry. ROTC right. kind of thing. And uh, so that was my goal in life. You know, my dad served 24 years in the oh. military. And it was something I wanted to do because I wanted to get some experience yeah. for law enforcement, you know. Oh, okay. That was the goal. And yeah. uh, a lot of unhappy people, but uh, <laughs> it was a decision I made and I have no regrets. Yeah. You know. Especially now, huh? Yes, that's true. <laughs> so did you become military? I mean, uh, get in the military? I did. Or? I served three years oh. active. And then I was in the reserve at quite a few times afterwards. Okay. And were there servicemen's branches then, when you were, wherever you went? or? Yes, I was the Army Military Police, and there oh, yeah. were some branches there. Oh, I was spent uh, three years over in Germany. Okay. And so the church was strong over there. Yeah. yeah. Where did you serve in Germany? A um, little place called Munster by Dieburg. Oh. And uh, Mannheim. Okay. Two locations. Beautiful there. country over there, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful country, beautiful people. Yeah. yeah. So then you come home. Now, you're not married at this point, are you? No. Okay. I wasn't. So then what no. happens? Yeah, then um, <clears throat> my mother and some people from the Mormon church were there again trying to get me to go on a mission. Oh, even and after the military? Even after the military. Oh, they boy. They were pushing for me to go. But uh, I still didn't feel like that's what I should do. Huh. So, you know, and uh, they tried to teach me how they teach the lessons that you teach as a missionary. Right, right. But... Uh, I just told him, I said, I'm really not interested. Huh. Even though you, did you feel the church was true at this point? And uh, you know, I th there, was, there were questions, I think, within my heart. Yeah. Something wasn't right, but I didn't know what, it, what was. it was. And I didn't have the answers, and I didn't know who to talk to. Yeah. You know. You could never really talk to family, I guess, too well. <laughs> no. Or mom, at least. And, That's true. Yeah. So, uh, what's next in life? Um, then I was uh, working and uh, was going to go to college. Okay. And uh, to become a physical therapist, that was one of my goals. And uh, ended up meeting my wife, Pamela. Okay. And uh, we're going to get to meet her later. Right. Yeah. And she's she, from the day I met her. Uh, I knew she was the one I wanted to marry. Yeah? It was love at first sight. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it was. And, and did she know you were Mormon, I guess? And did you go to church with, uh, at that point, were you going to church? I was going to church uh, here and there, on and off. Yeah. Yeah, and she did know I was Mormon. Did you try to get her converted? I tried, but uh, she's, she's a very, uh, strong person in her beliefs. Yeah. I always told her she should have been a lawyer, <laughs> you know. Uh, but she's very strong and she loves the Lord with all her heart that she will not, she'll go straight. She will not go to the right or the left. So did you uh, try to get her to talk to the missionaries at all? In fact, she was good enough to have the missionary, missionaries over a couple times. Oh, she did? She huh? did. And heard yeah. the lessons? or She heard the lessons and then she'd ask them questions and yeah, uh, that must have been interesting to listen to that. It was, it was. <laughs> Especially you know. somebody that knows a little bit uh, right. about Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. So what did yeah. you think? Did you think like, well, I guess this will never happen? Yeah, you get to that point because uh, it wasn't going to happen. It makes life when you're married, when you're not, not the same religion, yeah. same beliefs, it makes it hard because where are your goals? Yeah. You know, and you need goals. You need to have that together. And it's that one ship. Yeah, that's a real you blessing, know. isn't it? Oh, it is. So, where did you end up meeting her? Where were you guys at when this? Uh, when you met Coos her? Coos Bay, Oregon. In Oregon. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I worked at Kmart in appliances. Okay. <laughs> you know, and uh, she was in apparel. Oh, oh, so yeah. you were working in the same place? Yes, sir. 
Oh. Yeah. Did you ever go to church with her at this point? I, uh, I did a couple times. Yeah, what did you think and of that? The people, the pastor and everyone was really nice, but I just, it's like he's up there preaching, but under what authority yeah. is he preaching? That's why yeah. I was asking if, he, if, right. if you need the what, priesthood to preach and right, lead the church. Because what did you think? Do you think that, well, he doesn't have the right to do that? or That's he basically be? what I thought, that what right does he have to, to <laughs> preach if he doesn't have uh, the most... The priesthood. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, so... Did you ever say anything to your wife about that, or...? Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. We did. Yeah. And, uh, you didn't talk to the pastor about it, or did you? Not that I recall. Yeah. Anyway, so you came to the conclusion. Did you listen to him very long, or for I went for the full service, and in fact, they'd come over to our house, yeah, and they'd talk. And did you go back, or uh, I, if I recall right, I went back a couple yeah. times, you did know, you? trying to. What did you did you hear a message there that you hadn't heard as a Mormon, or the message that I heard more so was he, everything was about Jesus. Funny thing, huh? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> But uh, in Not prophets, being Mormon, it wasn't uh, what I was used to or no. what I knew. Right. You know, because yeah. the Jesus in the Mormon uh, Mormonism <coughs> is not the same. No. You know. No, it's different. And right. Gordon B. Hinckley said that, right? He said that it wasn't the same Jesus that uh, the Mormons believe. So what happens? Do you try to keep going to Mormon church, or what? what well, do we you kind guys of. Do? She went to hers, and I went to mine sometimes, or oh, we just think? didn't go at all. Yeah. I think you know, just let's let's not create an argument, yeah. cause havoc in the family. Maybe it's <laughs> easier just not to go. Yeah. But uh, she was very strong in her belief. She has an awesome relationship with with the Lord. Yeah. And she. Uh, that started coming through to your heart too, or uh, through a lot of prayer. Uh, she, she said that uh, my pride really gets in the way. <laughs> I can be very prideful, you know. If I say something, I'm not going to go to the right, left. This is what I feel, and it may be wrong. Once you've said it, you're, right. you're stuck I'm with it. <laughs> I am. I am. That sounds like a guy, doesn't it? it a does, guy huh? thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so I, I believe we just. Didn't go that often, you know. Yeah. We really didn't, because we saw that all it was creating was a nightmare. In so, our what happened in your life to turn things around? I think, uh, you know, she tells me she wishes that she had a part in me receiving Jesus Christ for salvation, and uh, she is the main reason. That I met the Lord. You know, it's through her strength, her example, and her prayers. Really? And she never gave up. And the, what did it take for you to make that little switch to see things a little differently? Well, she was seeing a, going to a little church, and this was in Brookings, Oregon. Okay. And, uh, One day, and I'm, I'm in the grocery business, and I came home, and uh, she said, Honey, the church I'm going to, the pastor and his wife would like to come over this evening. Right there, if I had hair on my back, which I don't, it would have gone up, you know. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so right up, my guard went up, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, know what, I know what they're after, what they're going to do. Uh, they came over, and we across the street was a Fred Myers, but uh, they came over, and his what the pastor's wife said to Pam and my kids, and asked, "Let's go to Fred Myers. Let's go see what's going on there, and leave these two men alone." And I'm thinking, "Oh, this is not going to be good," <laughs> you know. Well, one on one. <laughs> one on one, it was, and so they left, and. Uh, Dan was his name, and uh, we sat and talked. He asked about the Bible, if I knew anything about the Bible. I to explained to him, not really. I don't. I, I've got one, but it's the Mormon Bible, along with the Book of Mormon. And uh, 
I really don't know much, but what I've read, I'd take time and I'd read Pam's, I'd take her Bible, and I'd sit down and read her Bible in the mornings before I'd go to work. Really? So I was searching and trying to, what's the total difference? What am I missing? Because I knew there's something missing. Yeah. And uh, so our exact conversation, I, I don't recall. But I know he talked me, he talked me about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ did for me, and uh, you ever heard all that he before? went through. I think I've heard a rough draft on it, but not to the extent what really happened, what he, was what he really sacrificed, right. what he did for us, and uh, God just. He ripped my heart out, and he, he said, you know, we got on our knees, and I can hear it to this day. God told me, he said, Robert, you don't need anything, anyone else. All you need is me. Wow. And from that moment on, I've been a new person. Mm -hmm. My life has changed. And our marriage has just blossomed. He's blessed us uh, beyond. How long ago was okay. this? Oh, about 34 years ago. Oh, my goodness. I recall. And it's vivid even today, I guess, huh? When? And very tender, I can tell. It is. Yeah. Because it's the best thing that ever happened in my life. It, I mean, there's nothing more valuable more precious than that relationship and knowing Jesus Christ. Well, we talk about it here so often about the freedom that it offers and, and the confidence that we feel now being in Christ and Him in us. And it is joyful, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. It, it gives you a joy that the world cannot give. In fact, what joy really means, we can't comprehend the love and the joy He gives us yeah. till its full extent. Yeah. And we don't appreciate it enough, you know. Did you uh, share this, with, obviously, with Pam when she came home? <laughs> yes. She could tell something had happened. <laughs> right. They came in the door, and I just jumped up, and I was crying, just bawling. And I told her, I said, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And Oh, boy, I bet that made her so happy. Huh? It did. From that moment on, our life has just blossomed. Wow. Uh, when you have that moment, do you, you, you just appreciate Jesus in such a different way than ever before. You'd always believed that he was your elder brother, right? Right, right. And that he was Satan's brother. And exactly. He, he was a created being. He was just one of the many kids Heavenly Father had, right? That's correct. And then all of a sudden to realize he's God. <laughs> right, he's God, the sacrifice that he made, and that he's real, as, just as real as us. Yeah. And, uh, and the creator. Never, <laughs> and the creator of everything, you yeah. know? And I didn't really know, even in Mormonism, it wasn't real. He wasn't real to me. Of course, it was somebody else, but yeah, it just wasn't just real. just our older brother. I mean, he just kind of came along before us. Right. Yeah. And yes, uh, just one of many doing their thing. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's exciting. So did you, were you able to share this with your family and your um, mom? My dad had passed away a year before we got married. She never met oh, my dad, so oh, I didn't have the opportunity yeah. uh, to tell him about it. But I did tell my mom, and she was not happy. Oh. In fact, it, uh, my mom and I had a pretty good relationship, and that kind of really broke the relationship. It, huh? right. Is it any better now? No, uh, she's since passed away this last oh, February. Okay. And, uh, Never really happy about your journey. She though. wasn't. Yeah. She really wasn't. Isn't it interesting, and you, uh, if I'm putting words in your mouth, I'm sorry, but, or you can 
correct me, but you may have wandered a little bit through these few years between Mormon and, and the time the pastor gets, gets to you. And we're okay, Mormons are okay with that. You know, you don't need to be, well, I mean, they'd rather have you active, but if you're not totally 100% or whatever, right. you know, they can live with that because they figure you're going to come back. Right. You know, but once you make that, accept Jesus, I mean, why would, why is that, I mean, it is in my family too, but why is that such a breaking point to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? All that means, I guess, is that the church isn't true. Right. And that oh, you don't need it. You don't need the priesthood. You'd have Jesus. Exactly. That's hard for the Mormons to accept, isn't it? It's yeah, very hard. Very yeah. hard because uh, the way that the teachings and the way they've been brought up. Yeah. And they paint a pretty picture. Yeah. Need in a loving a, way. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You need to have a prophet and everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I. Uh, wrote a letter to the church and I called them. I said, remove my name from the records. Oh, you did? I did. Yeah. And I had some visits uh, <laughs> from some men asking me, is, are you sure this is what you want to do? Yeah. And I said, you know, I, all I need is Jesus. That's all I need. Now you've done some teaching since uh, you've become a Christian. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about some of the thing, activities you've done and what you've been involved in. Because I think sometimes Mormons just think that Christians are now free to do anything they want, eat, drink, and be merry, and they don't have any, you know, they're saved by grace, so they don't have to do anything special. And what's your take on that? Well, I think that's the way they feel, you know, but they don't understand grace, you know. Uh, we just but, don't, that's for sure. Yeah, Mormons, pardon, don't, Mormons don't understand no, real grace. They, they really don't. Yeah. But as far as teaching, the church we went to up in uh, Fall River Mills, the pastor, uh, it was a uh, kind of crazy story. We were driving by. We just moved there. I was a store director in the grocery business. Yeah. Moved there. And uh, I said, honey, that's where we're going to church. <laughs> and she said, well, we'll, get, we'll go this Sunday. And uh, we went, and the next Sunday she says, let's try a different church. And uh, I went, going to go past, steering wheel went right into that church. She said, what are you doing? I said, this is where we're going to church. This is where God is leading us. And uh, she said, okay, <laughs> you know. But uh, that's where God really started using us, not only me, my wife, but my kids. Really? Yes, sir. And the Lord just opened the doors. And when the pastor had asked me to preach when he was gone away, really? I'd never done anything like that. Yeah. You know, and as, and I wanted to say no. Those were my first words, <laughs> ready to fly out, and yes comes out. And it's like, <laughs> okay. Who said that? Yes, who said that, you know? And I thought, well, I said yes, I can't back down now. Yeah. Let's go along for the ride, see what happens. How did that go? You know what, uh, God really opened my eyes that He's in control and if I, you know that song, uh, I believe it goes, Jesus, give the wheel to Jesus. Something oh, along those Jesus lines. take the wheel. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus take the wheel. And uh, if you rely on Him, and put your faith and trust in Him. You have nothing to fear. Yeah, isn't you know? that incredible? Did you yeah. always sense in Mormonism that it was about climbing the ladder, so to speak, and that what what you were doing mattered to your salvation, that you were earning your way to heaven? Uh, I I looked at it that way. Sure. I did. Yeah. You know, every step. And the one thing that. Uh, I was praying the other day, and uh, this came to my heart. And if I had a handful of stones, and I was to take the stones on what it takes to get to heaven with Mormonism, uh, if I had 50 stones, I'd have a pile of stones. Yeah. And in these are the things I need to do to get to heaven to get there. in Mormonism. Right. And then in this hand, <laughs> I have the same amount of stones. But what do I need is one stone, and that's Jesus Christ and what he did that's for our salvation. That's a great story. Got a pile of stones, and I just got 
Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. And who would you rather have? Jesus. Yeah. yeah. It's just amazing. It's, it is. So this he has is. been a, a good many years then for you, huh? It has. Uh, I was a Mormon for 20 years. You know. Yeah. But uh, God is real to me as both of us, both yeah. of us sitting here yeah. talking today. Yeah. Am I perfect? Am I sinless? No. <laughs> But he loves me anyway. Yeah. You know. And you do good works because you've been saved, not to be saved. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. Because that's what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, we're almost out of time already. Uh, anything you want to say to family or friends? People might listen to this. Suggestions or? I would like to say just that uh, open your heart. Don't. Don't fear. Just open your heart. Pray and open your open a Bible and start reading the Bible and pray about the Word that God would open your heart and open your eyes because I can tell you right now, it'll change your life and uh, you won't have any regrets. Yeah. The perspective and the joy and the freedom and my yoke is easy, my burden is light and... Exactly, yeah. and I rely on him every day, yeah. every day, every moment. And you, you say you have children. How many do I you do. have? I have a boy and a girl. Okay, uh, and are they, they are they fellowshipped and are they involved in that kind of stuff? My daughter is. Uh, well, what I meant is uh, in Mormonism, I think they think that Christians. I, I never really thought that Christians cared about. I mean, I know they care about their kids, but I never thought of churches having youth programs and children's programs. Right. But they do. They do. They care about the family. And, they really do. Yeah. And support really and, and so on. Yeah. They really do. Yeah. Well, great. I, well, I didn't mean to cut you off about your kids. Did you want to say something more there? No, I just, yeah. just say, you know. Uh, but we all face challenges in life, that's for sure. Yeah. We do. But you know what? Life is a lot easier with the Lord. Oh, yeah. What a great message. Really well, Robert, nice. thanks for sharing your story. I sure I appreciate, appreciate it. your time. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so for coming much. over and, and sharing. And uh, we'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>